you ever woke up at 3 a.m.? No, I'm really asking you, have you ever woke up at just like 3 a.m.? And then not only did you wake up like right at 3, but you seen it was somebody staring at you. Now, this happened all the time. People on trains and buses, planes, and, you know, all these public places. And matter of fact, man, studies show that um, this instinctive response is, you know, like a defense mechanism. Defense mechanism of your subconscious mind, you know, letting your senses know that it's a potential threat. Now, many other species in the animal kingdom, you know, all the different animals, they got the same type of traits and they help them survive. Now, you know, because of this, because of this, you might want to consider, you know, closing them curtains and shutting your door the next time you wake up at 3 a.m. But what if what's looking at you already inside your room? What if whatever is messing with your mind is already there? What if you're trying to run from something that already got a hold on you? It kept happening to me. I kept just waking up every night, 3 a.m., like clockwork. And it's crazy because, you know, I didn't have to wake up for work until about 7. So... You know, there's no reason for me to wake up you know, at 3. I've, I've never set my alarm for 3 o'clock or, you know, even anytime, anywhere around that. And then for it to be exactly at 3 every day, you know, how is that possible? I never just woke up at 7, and that's the time I set my thing to wake up for. And I don't wake up at 7 automatically, so why am I waking up at 3 on like clockwork, man? And every time I woke up, you know, I just, I didn't really realize it because the first couple of nights I didn't look at the clock. You know, I just wake up, you know, stretch, maybe go use the bathroom or something, and lay back down. But as it happened about three, four times, I said, man, what time is it? I just happened to look at my phone, and it's three. I ain't think nothing of it. So the next week, Happened a couple more times. So I said, hey, it's 3 o'clock again. So I don't know if it's, um, you know, I'm like, man, is, is it is, is it a neighbor? You got an alarm clock that go off at 3? You know, maybe you know how they got like them dog whistle things that you can't really hear. Maybe somebody got some kind of alarm clock that go off somewhere and that's what's waking me up or something and maybe i'm hearing it but i ain't really realizing i'm hearing it because i'm you know i'm just coming up like it got to be something that's going on because i stay in a um in the dang row houses man you know the row houses it's like um it's like projects but they not the big project building built up like an apartment building it's like little houses right next to each other like a bunch of little duplexes and, but it ain't a duplex it's like a uh, a, a tenplex <laughs> so it's just a row of houses all look the exact same same size yard same porch same door same window everything the exact same and they all right 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 next to each other <laughs> so you know I'm figuring you know sometimes I'll probably just be hearing my neighbors or whatever man but as time go we talking about nine I'm on week number three Three weeks of waking up at 3 a.m. Now, at this point, like in my mind, man, I'm, um, you know, <laughs> I started talking to people about it and uh, just, you know, just casually, man, you know, I just keep waking up. Every time I talk to somebody about it, they just laugh, all oh, this crazy. Or, or, you know, they'll say, yeah, that be happening to me sometime and blah. You know, but nobody really gave me a, a reason why or whatever. So, you know, I just carried on and just started accepting this as just like the way things going to be. So, 
after a while though now we talking about it been three weeks but now at this point it's like been a month and a half now I started realizing that my sleep that I'm getting affected throughout the day man because you know I'm not getting my full night of sleep I ain't getting that good old REM sleep or whatever you call it so in the middle of the night I'm waking up getting disturbed and you know now when I try to get up at Sam, you know, I'm, I'm groggier than I would be. And you know me, I lay it on down, <laughs> boy. I don't, I ain't one of those folks that only need four, fives, or whatever. I need some sleep, bro. So I go to bed early, man. So, uh, you know, I need my, my, my 10 hours. And I wasn't getting it, man. So it was, I was off the next day. So I told myself, I like, all right, this is what I'm going to do. I'm a, uh, I'm a, uh, what you call, I'm a, uh, um, I'm a, I'm a stay up. I know it's against everything I believe in, but I'm a stay up tonight. I'm a stay up and I'm a see, I'm a just see maybe something going on. Maybe a, somewhere an alarm clock going off. Maybe it's a train that go by. Maybe... The firemen try to do they fire drills at three. Maybe it's something that's going on at three o'clock. That's what's wa- what's waking me up. So this night I say I'm gonna stay up, man. It was hard, cause I usually be going to bed. Like if I go to bed at ten, that's late. <laughs> you know I me, mean? cause so I try to get down. I try to lay it on down by like nine. So around eight o'clock, eight thirty, you know I'm. You know, getting ready, man. You're getting ready to lay down, man. So by nine, I want to be in the bed, man. You know, whatever shows and stuff I want to watch, I record that junk and uh, I'll watch it later, bro. You know. So um, I got everything set, and I go and um, you know, I, I got me some food, you know, some snacks and all that. You know, I figure I get me some candy and all that. That'll help me. Get a little sugar rush and stuff. So I had me little snacks and stuff. And I had, um, you know, I had my phone and everything. And I had, you know, whatever looks the shows and stuff I was going to watch. You know, I had my Xbox and stuff. So I'm like, bro, I'm going to get it in tonight. So I sit up. I sit up. And get it. And now it's about 12. Now I'm doing big yawns, man, because... You know, I ain't used to being up this late, man. I'm already asleep by this time, man. So, you know, I'm doing my best to stay up, man. I'm slapping myself, pinching myself, getting up, walking around, and jogging in place and everything. And um, so I said, okay, okay, this this ain't working. This ain't, you know, let me let me get up, let me get up and um turn the game on. Now, you know. You can't go to sleep playing the game. Like, I remember when I was little, boy, my daddy used to... My daddy used to be playing that Zelda, boy, back on Nintendo 64. He be playing that Zelda and this other game called Shadow Man. And he always played Shadow Man because the main character was black. <laughs> it was the only game he had a black main character. So he'd fall. I'd wake up in the middle of the night and he'd be um, sitting there at the foot of the bed, sleep with the control in his hand still, just running against, running in circles or running against the wall or something. So, um, what happened, what happened? So, yeah, I'm sitting there, I get to playing the game, and now this woke me up pretty good, man. So, next thing I know is 1 o'clock, and I'm like, cool, I'm almost there. I keep going, it's 2 o'clock. I'm like, okay, cool. We getting there now at 2 o'clock. I turned the, um, I, you know, I kind of turned the TV down because I just wanted to make sure I could hear, you know, whatever it was. And I had everything set up in my bedroom because that's where I be. You know, I ain't want to be like over in the front and I miss it. So I'm sitting there in the bedroom just, you know, listening. So um, I'm listening. I'm listening. I ain't hearing nothing. So now at 2.30 hit. Still ain't hearing nothing. So I'm like, dang, man. I sure hope I ain't staying up for no reason, man. Now, 2.45. Still ain't heard nothing. So I'm still listening, still listening. 
So now I turn the game off, turn the TV off and stuff, you know, put my phone on mute. Now I'm really listening now. I'm saying, okay, something got to be going on. Something got to be happening to get me up every single night at the same exact time. 2.50 hit. Nothing. Now, 2.55 hit. Now, at this point, I'm really, (laughs) I'm getting anxious, man, because I'm thinking, okay, you know, here we go. Here come whatever, this alarm or whatever, this buzzing of, you know, neighbor or siren or whatever keeping me up. That mug getting ready to go off real in a, in a second. I got to listen because I think it only go off like one time. So I'm listening and I'm trying to figure out, I wonder what kind of noise or what kind of siren or what kind of alarm or bell or whatever it's going to be. Now, all of a sudden, I heard some jangling. I'm like, what is that? So I get up. And I'm listening hard, sitting up in the bed. And then I hear a door creak. What? Man, now, um, I get up out the bed, slow. I'm like, somebody coming in my house. So I get up and I and I look down, because I'm at one end of the house, I look at the other end, and I see a big shape come in. Now the shape is is a, a human shape, man. But it's dark, you know, I can't really see see it. But I see the shape came coming in the house. Now the shape closed the door and started looking over. And then the shape started making its way to like down to my side of the house. Now me, I ain't no fighter. So I get scared, man. I run, I jump back in the bed, man. And I lay down under the covers, man. And I'm and I'm 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 watching the door between the covers. But I ain't um you know what I'm saying? I'm like peeking just barely. Now, I hear the thing walking. It grunting, making noise. Then right when he get ready to pass my door, he start whistling and, and jingling keys, man. And he walked right through and stopped when he got to my door. He looked in and said, everything okay here? Just checking on you. Let me know if you need anything. And then he walked clean out the back door. I looked at my clock on the phone and it was 3 a.m. It was a cold Saturday night, and I just got home from work, and I was I was tired beyond belief, man. And I threw my bag down on the couch, and, you know, even though my job, you know, working at the desk and stuff is simple, today was just a, t- a freaking exhausting day. I opened the fridge to grab me something to eat, but, you know, it was empty. And I'm, like, really sure that, um... That my daddy said he was going to go grocery shopping, man, you know, a few days ago. But there wasn't nothing in the fridge, man. I'm like, I know Pops ain't ate that much stuff. What you going to go shopping for? You going to come home and eat it all, man. 
There wasn't even no baloney in that, man, you know. Worst case scenario, you should be able to bust out the baloney real quick. And, um, you know, so that was weird, man. And the only other person who got a key to my place is my daddy, man. So why would he uh, help me buy the food then go and eat it all? But I just shrugged it off, man. I said, I don't know, maybe... You know, Pop's getting old, man. He be doing all kind of weird stuff now, man. So maybe he just, whatever. So I'm like, ah, I got to go back to the store now. Now, I only lived about two blocks away from the little corner store. And the car was low on gas, so walking would be a better option. Now, even though it was 11 o'clock, made me feel a little bit uneasy. And, you know, I live in a bad part of, over up there in the shop, man. You know, I stay... I stay in a rough area, man. So, uh, that's all I got to say. I live in Chicago. <laughs> you know, that's all it takes. You, y'all understand. For y'all that don't stay in America, uh, you know, they got the country called Iraq, right? So, they call Chicago Chirac. You know, it's, it's America's version of Iraq. And America got a few versions of Iraq. That's one of them, though. So, anyway, um, uh, you know, as I walked to the store, it was a lot of folks outside, man. And I felt a little better because I felt like, you know, all these people out of something happened, at least somebody there to say, hey, you stopped, <laughs> you know. So, you know, I know I ain't going to get raped or mugged or not while I'm out here, you know, so I have a better chance of getting up out of there. Now, well, most likely they really ain't going to mess with me at all, you know. I need to just relax so I just told myself take a deep breath and you know and let it out man so now when I got in the store I went over there and got me a, uh, a can of that uh, Hormel chili y'all know about that man y'all what y'all know about that got a chili and then I went over there to the freezer section and got some of them fries well, I'm gonna put them fries in the oven with some uh, <clears throat> with some of that good old lorry seasoning salt and then take that chili and put that chili on top of there then I take me a little can. I get a little jar of that um that that uh that uh that cheesy salsa salsa con con queso or whatever it's called. Man, I put some of that. Ooh. ooh. <laughs> then get a little. I don't get no real Doritos, but I get them knockoff Doritos. You know, nacho cheesy chips. I go get me some of them. Put that on top of that. Boy, I'm trying to tell you, man. You know, so uh, I'd I be good for a few days right here with this, man. And I'm like, you know, I'm, I'm straight, man. So, you know, all of a sudden I started, you know, feeling real kind of like, you know, you get that, that uneasy feeling in your stomach, man. And I'm thinking about the refrigerator. And I just couldn't shake it, man. You know, I just kept thinking, why would my daddy do that, man? And anyway, I paid for the food or whatever. You know, it was it was under like under ten dollars or whatever, and I started walking back to my spot. Now the amount of cars and stuff was like you know getting decreasing, man. Less folks was starting to be out, and I ain't seem to notice, you know, like I did on the way in. And the only people out were either the, you know homeless guys or the dope boys and stuff, you know, sitting on porches and staring at nothing and stuff. And I'm just shivering and stuff, and I pulled my coat, you know, right all up over my neck and stuff as that cold wind came and hit me right in the face. Now, it was just like fall time, almost winter, so, you know, this, of course, is going to be cold. But this gust of air was real. It kind of put me, like, it made me, like, sit up straight. It was so dang cold, man. And um, when I went to reach to put my hoodie on, and my hood o over my head, you know, I saw, like, this figure in the alley a few feet ahead of me. Now, it was a dark, like, shape, but I could tell it was a human shape. Now, while I'm walking forward, it, the figure got more clear. And at first, I saw, you know, it's just any other homeless man, but it was something weird about him. He was wearing his real expensive suit, in a long dark trench coat, man, on some mafia stuff, man. And he had slicked black, like dark hair, man. Slicked back dark hair, I mean. And uh and his skin was real pale. 
Hey, he almost looked like he almost looked like a vampire or something, man. But not the kind, you know, not one of them sexy vampires like them Twilight vampires. Like he looked like a a real vampire that been around for for thousands of years and been through some stuff, man. And he had this long scar, long ugly scar across his forehead, and had an eye patch over his right eye. And he had chapped lips and little, you know, and his other eye was just beady, man, little beady black eye, man. Now, as I got close to him, you know, I'm trying to, um, you know, trying to, you know, I was trying to hurry up and get past him, man. Now, I'm just for show, sure, like, I'm like, man, this guy finna jump on me, um, push me into a car and, and the summon and kill me, man. I just knew this guy ready to kill the next person that even get within arms reach of him, man. Get within freaking spitting distance of him finna catch a beat down or something, man. But he just stared at me, man. You know, he didn't blink. And even with the strong wind, as I passed him, his eyes just followed me, man. Like the wind didn't bother him or nothing, man. And I wasn't trying to look at him too, too hard. But I could see his, I could tell he was looking at me out of my peripheral or whatever. And his head stayed like, um, you know, he kept his posture, everything perfect. I'm like, this ain't no homeless man. You know, this guy, nah, this ain't no homeless guy, man. Now, after about three minutes of, you know, getting down the sidewalk, I'm trying to keep it moving pretty quick, man. But my hood pulled over my face. I look back, and I expect to see him following me, but instead, it's just two um, clucks back there fighting over Ain't no telling what, man, you know, so, it, you know, I, I felt, it felt regular to see, uh, you know, two clucks back there fighting, man, <laughs> you know, that's, that's what I expect to see out around 11, 12 o'clock at night, man, you know, um, so I let out a sigh of relief, man, and I, and I really didn't want him to know where I live, and I finished the rest of the walk home thinking, you know, it's just uh, any other guy or whatever, man. So now I pulled out my key to open the door, and I remember the fridge, the refrigerator or whatever. And now most people would have went on and got past that by now. But I'm thinking it must have been a stranger had been in my house. It finally hit me, man. And um, they had to come in, and they had to see the whole layout of my house. And they got to be hiding under my bed right now. And they, they're they waiting on me and they're going to kill me. Because why else would you wait in my house? And who are they in the first place? Why? You pick my apartment out of every apartment in this, on this block. Why am I? I ain't got none. And the first person to pop it in my head was the man in the alley. So then I tell myself, no, you just being paranoid. And I tried to, like, rationalize the situation and stuff. But ain't nothing I was telling myself making sense. So I decided to finally just go ahead and call my papa and uh, and uh, ask him why would he take my food that he helped me buy. Now, when he picked up, you know, I realized that I woke him up with the call. And, uh, you know, I wasn't thinking it was midnight. You know us, man. It's 2020, man. Midnight. It ain't like what? It used to be like, man, you know, it used to be like, okay, I ain't going to call after. Like, I wouldn't call somebody after. Hey, people my age, you know, whatever. But other people I wouldn't call, like, after. I'm, I'm thinking nine. But nowadays, it ain't too late. To, <laughs> you know, what's too late to call somebody now? I guess really after now at one probably too late. I say anywhere up to I say after twelve probably too late. But anytime before the end, shoot, if I gotta call you, I'm calling. You, <laughs> you know, now if it's on the weekend, I will call up. You got up till one, and I won't call. You know, but other than that, it's twenty twenty, man. So you know, I was just trying to keep it real quick with him. I asked him if he had been to my house today, and um. Uh, he said no. And uh, even though I saw, I knew he was going to say no, it put me in danger mode. And it's funny how the refrigerator situation was more scary to me than a man in the alley. And before he could ask why, I entered the car and I got me a weapon, man. Now, forgetting about being so hungry, 
I locked all the doors and windows and I searched the apartment. And of course, no man in the alley was to be found. And maybe he took the food from my fridge to lure me out of the house to see what I looked like. You know, to examine my habits. And maybe he waiting outside my door right now. So I sat on the couch just to, you know, kind of get my thoughts together or whatever. But instead, I messed around and fell asleep, man. All that adrenaline hit, and after that, you know, the adrenaline died, man. I guess I just fell on out, man. Now, a whole year that went by. And I know I'm skipping a big old chunk of life, man, but ain't nothing went on, man. Just another year of being broke, man, you know. I got my taxes, spent it, uh... You know, and that was it. <laughs> My taxes expected. So, I, the man never came for me. I never saw him. You know, a whole year went by. I never saw him again. All the times I'd be around in the neighborhood, never saw him. And everything went back to being normal. And the man had went away from my thoughts for a whole, you know, I forgot about him by now. Now, until last night. I was dreaming about that same night, that same night on the street. And all the details came back. That chili and them uh, and them knock off Doritos and them uh, and that that cheese and that jar. All the stuff just you know start coming back to me. The two uh, them two clucks out there fighting over whatever. And the only thing that was missing was the man. And he wasn't there when I passed the alley. And in my dream. When that cold gust of wind hit me, I pulled my hood up, and he still wasn't there. He just wasn't there. But in his place was the shadow of a dumpster. And that's what really messed with me. The man in the alley not being in the dream, but everything else being in the dream. And I kept having the same dream night after night, every time without the man. And most people would have been relieved. But this wasn't normal, man. Not for me. I ain't never had no reoccurring dreams and stuff, man. And so now I start thinking, was the man really there in the first place? Was that just my imagination? Could my mind really be... Like, could I really... Could my mind really be that dumb and stupid <laughs> but smart at the same time where it can just make up whole people in my imagination? imagination you know maybe I'm the one that took the food out the refrigerator and uh, my paranoia just got the best of me maybe I woke up sleepwalking and just went in there and threw down one night and don't remember now my thoughts was interrupted by a knock at the door and my friend said she'd be here around this time so I figured it was her but when I opened the door you already know who it was the man was standing there with that same, that same look, man. Just looking through my, just looking through my heart and soul down into, just looking all the straight through me, man. The same scar, same missing eye. And before I could say anything, everything turned black. You listening out there? I hope you is. I had a story I'ma tell you, but um, you can't tell nobody else. You gonna make me look real crazy, you know? And um, I ain't got much in this life, so I at least want, you know, my my thoughts to be safe, right? You know, I ain't got a lot, but at least I got my I got my mind, I got my thoughts, and um, I share them with you because I trust you, but, you know, this this right here stops after just, after you hear this, it stops. Now, we all know that I'm not the most law-abiding citizen. Matter of fact, you know, I don't tell, I don't care nothing about no law. You know I'm a lawbreaker, man, and uh. You know, I tell you that I tell you, I know last time we talked, I told you that, 
you know, I break the law because I don't agree with it. And that might be true, you know, I, yeah, I don't agree with it, but I know that don't make it right. And I know that um, I think people should have a choice on what they do, and, and everybody don't agree with that, and it is what it is. You know, I'm not even here to argue that. I'm just here to tell you what happened that night. Now, um, we were supposed to go out and make the easiest money we ever made. It was supposed to be just, you know, get this guy the box, he gonna give us a bag. I don't know what was in the box, but I know what was in the bag, and that was some money. Now, you know, everything I've ever done has been for money, so I can feed my family, you know, help out the folks and friends and stuff, you know. Everything I've always done has been about money. It's never been about, um, it's never been about just being a bad guy because it's cool. I know a lot of guys was just trying to fit in. A lot of guys was just trying to be cool, but that's not why I was ever out there. I was never out there for that. I was only ever out there so I could make some money. Now, um, That night, it was supposed to be the most money we ever made, and it was supposed to be the easiest money we ever made. All we had to do was just show up, get a guy the money, I mean, get a guy the box, and he was gonna give us the money. Now, to this day, I still don't know what was in the box. You know, I can guess, I guess it was drugs. For all I know, it could have been somebody needed a heart and buying, buying a heart on the black market. And just head paying us to transfer, you know, making us think it's dope when really we got a dang human heart in there. For all I know, that's what it was. For all I know, it was a monkey heart. And they was trying some new project science thing to see if they could put a monkey heart in a human. But whatever it was, me and, um, I'm, I can't say his name. I'm sorry, I know, I know, and uh, you would think that by now I'd be in, you know, made peace with it, and, but I, I still can't say his name to this day, but we both know who I'm talking about. I just call him my brother for right now, so me and our brother. We picked up the box. The guy that gave us the box, he was... I never seen nobody like him before. Like, it was dark, and he had a hood on, and I could see his face, but I couldn't see his face. Like, I could make him out, but I can't make him out. Like, even to this day, I can still see him in my head, but I can't see him. It's it's so hard to un it's so hard to explain. You know, I can see him right now, but I can't make him out. But if I ever saw him again, I know that I synced him. And I know it sound crazy. I know you probably just think I was high that night or whatever, but and um But I wasn't. I wasn't high, I wasn't drinking that night. Um I was I was me because I knew it was money involved. And when it come down to the money, yeah, I might go party afterwards, but I ain't finna party before I get that bag. I got to make sure I did what I'm supposed to do because there's people depending on me to do what I'm supposed to do. And somebody I love might get hurt because I didn't do what I was supposed to do. <laughs> Excuse me. So I did. I did my part. And our brother did his part. We took the thing from the guy. We, you know, we, we didn't really ask him much because we all know Coda Street, man. Keep your mouth shut. Be lucky that you even getting this money. And you probably don't want to know. So when the police ask you about it, you ain't got to lie. When you tell them you don't know, you don't know. So we took the box and the guy, you know, he made eye contact with us. But like I said, it's like everything... With his face, it was there, but it wasn't there. He looked at us and made eye contact, but he didn't. And it tripped. My brother was tripped out. He was, 
he, like he he didn't have a good feeling about it. Like he wanted the job, he wanted to make the money, but when he saw that guy, he didn't have a good feeling about that guy. I still remember. I can tell by you know, cause usually he was energetic and you know usually he was kind of upbeat. But when he saw that guy, we met him in the alley, and as we walked up to him, bro, man, she got real quiet. She got real quiet, man. He didn't even greet the guy, man. And, you know, he always, you know, it wasn't like him to, you know, not say what's up, dap you up, shake it, whatever. He just, he he didn't greet the guy. He didn't even give him, offer a fist bump, nothing. And I could understand, you know, it's business time, but I can tell by the way he was looking. He didn't like what he saw with that guy. But me, I saw it at the time, but at the time I was so ready for that money. All I could think about was... All I gotta do is take this box five miles from here, and I got the biggest payday I ever had. I was already spending money in my mind. I was already at the car dealership. I was already paying the bills. I had already wrote the the, um, the checks to pay the bills. I had already swiped my debit card. You know that's that's just the way my mind was thinking. My, I wasn't thinking about no consequences. You never think about no consequences. You know you. You know, criminals can say they smart or be smart or whatever the case may be, but at the end of the day, it's hard to be a criminal because if you do think things through, it's not going to make sense to you. You know, if you say, okay, I'm going to rob somebody tonight, first person I see look like he got a little bankroll, I'm going to take it from him. You know, it, it you can think it through all you want, but then if you get caught, it's 10 years. So, you can't think about the, the wrong to be a criminal. You can't think about the, you can't think things through. You got to just go in the moment. So, that's what I did. I just went in the moment. So, I got the box from the guy. And, um, and, um, I think I said, like, you know, is that it? That's it? Is it? And, um, guy nodded or something man just not even a full nod he just kind of just twitched his head a little bit and that's all I needed to see and I was gone and our brother he just he followed me but he was dragging his feet you know usually when he be walking he be moving with a purpose but he was dragging his feet I could tell, now that I look back on it, I can tell he didn't want to do it. But, you know, at the time, I already told you where my mind was at. When we got to the drop-off, it's like I had a choice. I had a choice to... I had a choice to go forward or I had a choice to turn back. And I know it sounds kind of crazy, but we had a five-mile walk. And the guy wanted us to to walk this thing. We had, we put it in a book bag and, and um, he didn't want us to drive. I don't know why. I didn't ask why. And the five-mile walk, to me, you know, that ain't nothing. I, we walk all the time, man. We on our feet all day in the street, you know. So it ain't. It wasn't nothing for us to so we'll do the little five mile walk. It might take a little minute, but hey, we knew at the end of this walk, everything finna be good. So while we was walking, every time I passed the alleyway or a little dip off somewhere, I thought about I should see what's in this box. What if I'm? What if it's something in here that's really evil? Not just somebody trying to make some money, but somebody doing something evil. You know, hey, if, uh, you know, I, I can't really knock somebody on how they make their living. But what if what they doing ain't just for money? What if it's to hurt somebody? You know, what if I'm delivering um, some organs that they stole from, you know, somebody killed them and stole their organs? You know, what if it's like old lady uh, like what if they kidnapped some guy cut his fingers off and sending it to somebody you know it's just all these crazy sick 
thoughts, man, just come across my head. And every time I pass the garbage can or I pass that dumpster, like I was saying, I wanted to throw it away. I didn't even want to know what was inside. I wanted to just get rid of it. And I looked at brother and bro, I'm like, and I and I snuck now the money went the money wasn't the money I still wanted it, but I did start to have second thoughts. And I looked at him just hoping that he'll speak up and say something. Just hoping he'll say you know what, man, we don't need this. Or let's at least see what's inside. Or just let's take it back. Let's call a guy and try to try to get it back. But why didn't he say anything? Because he didn't want to let me down. He didn't want to be the one who messed up the biggest payday we ever would have. Drug dealing not easy. You know, you see the same dope dealers on the corners for decades, man. Generations, the same folk on the corner. It's not easy, you know, everybody ain't Scarface. They ain't like the movies, man. Because when you do come up, you get caught and you go to jail for five, ten, whatever years. And you get out, now you start all over again, but you got felonies on you, so you go back to hustling. Now you try to build it up again, but the game has changed on you since you've been locked up. So it's not easy. It ain't no, you know, it ain't easy, man. I know back in the day, you know, everybody wanted to live the big dope boy dream, New Jack City dream, Scarface dream. Uh, but hey, man, uh, the streets ain't like that for real. That's the movies. Yeah, you got the big dogs, but everybody can't be a big dog. There ain't enough room for everybody to be a big dog. So, I kept going. I kept going with that box. I kept going till I got to where we was going. And when we got there, we stood and we waited. Now what happened next? I'm gonna have to go ahead and tell you the truth. I've been lying all these years. I laugh so much. I don't even know if you gonna even listen to this. To this. To this. I don't even know if you gonna listen to this to even hear the end, because I done told the same story so many times. But this time, I hope you listened all the way through, because I'm gonna tell you what happened when we got to where we was going to. We came to this big door big steel type door something like a like a vault like a bank vault thing and it was um and it was in the side of this warehouse and when we got to the door because this is what the guy told us to go to he said it'd be a big metal door and like this was this was a big metal door the door that you know is the door when you see the door and he um and he, um, the door opened, and when it opened, we, when it opened, we went inside, and when we got inside, we saw this, the warehouse was empty, but it was dirty, it was, it was like empty of people, and but it was old machinery and stuff still around. And the, everything was rusty. Everything was dirty. Everything had a layer of dirt on it about an inch thick. Right? It was like the nastiest place you ever seen where you didn't even want to. You, uh, you, you just didn't want to touch nothing how this place was. It looked like it could never even be clean. And when we got inside. We heard some noises. We heard like people talking, not like loud and and stuff, but just just you could hear them. You know, you could just hear them, just barely. So we made our way to the talking, and the next thing you know, 
we surrounded. We surrounded by it had to be it had to be like 30, 40, maybe even 50 people. It's hard to tell because it was dark. The only light was coming from a group of candles on the floor. A big, huge, a huge layout of candles, man. They had to be like, it was like 30 feet. It was like 30 feet wide of candles. And all the candles were shaped in the shape of a of a star, but not like a full star, but you know that, that witchcraft star, that demonic star that they have in the horror movies and stuff. And, um, when I seen it, I already knew what it, you know, I already knew that that I made a mistake. I knew I made a mistake before we even got there. But I knew then that we had went too far. So, I turned to run. I ran. I, man, I, I dropped the box. And I ran. I ran like I never ran before. And, um... I ain't turn around. I ain't turn around to look for him. I ain't turn around to see if he was with me. I ain't stop to see if oh, we was together. I ain't stop to see if we was if he was behind me. And um. And when, I, and when I got outside, I, I turned around. <laughs> I turned around and I looked back. And when I looked back, I saw that door. That big metal door is shut. And it shut him inside. And, uh, and I heard him banging on that door. I heard him banging and screaming at that door. And I heard him when he stopped banging and screaming at that door. <laughs> 